Here's an odd thing. It's a spinning holographic fan, fly repeller. And it's basically a fan by the look of it that has holographic blades that spins. Let's open it and try it out. And we'll see, is it likely to repel insects? I mentioned this to some co-workers and they said, oh yeah, they use those in cake shops. Because apparently uh, it does act as a deterrent. So inside we have uh, a tightly wedged unit. Put that out of the way. Here are the holographic spinning blades. It's got a USB power lead. Uh, and it's got a battery compartment. How many batteries does it take? It takes two double A's. Let me just uh, grab a couple of double A's. And we'll stick it in and we'll power it up and see if it holographically spins. So this goes in like that, that goes in like that. It's also got a little hanging loop in the bottom. I guess it's designed to be suspended above the, the area you are. Right. Okay, where's the switch? Oh, it's visually quite interesting. Perhaps I should have warned you about a strobing effect. I wasn't expecting that. Um, that's what the flies see. And I guess, ultimately, they don't really want to come near because they see something that could be possibly a predator fly. That's quite visually interesting. Right, tell you what, I'll turn that off. I'll actually try it with the USB. I don't have a USB convenient power supply here. Just give me a moment, I'm going to try this and I'll report back and tell you if there's any major difference. No major difference in speed and it drew about 100 milliamps. Let's open it up. Let's try and open it up. They got little rubber feet over the screws here. I may have to pause if they have because that's always a bit of a nuisance. We'll see if I can just hike these out. Yes, they've got screws underneath the uh, the rubber feet. I should just focus up to a better height here so you can watch the carnage happening in better definition. Little adhesive rubber feet. And I should just pop those screws out and we'll see what's inside. A motor. There's going to be some suction because it's not trying to charge the uh, alkaline cells. Which is good. It might just be a switch that separates. Hold on. This one, well, actually, no, it's too late now. I was going to plug the jack in. Oh, actually, I can tell you already, because uh, that when I was testing it, I plugged the jack in, and the thing was still running, I think, uh, even with the batteries there. Oh, there is a circuit board. And a diode and a transistor. Oh, that's more than I was expecting. Let's pop that out. This may have to be reverse engineered. There might be something devious and clever going on here. There's a switch. There's a connector at a funny angle. There's a diode, a transistor, and a resistor. Okay, right. And what's in the, the bottom here? We have oh, just the standard little uh, tiny solar style motor. Okie dokie, I shall take a picture of the circuit board and reverse engineer it because that is most likely the most interesting thing. One moment please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore and it's quite interesting. Let me zoom down this so we get a closer look. Oh, too much. That'll do. So we have the USB supply come in here in a little jack connector and it's not one of these jacks that disconnects. It's just a simple, plain, positive and negative jack connector. It does have a side connection, which means it might have that function, but in this case, they have used a MOSFET to disconnect the AA cells when the USB is connected. It's very, very clever. Um, so we've got a switch here. We've got the MOSFET and a pull-down resistor that normally turns this MOSFET on because it's a P-channel MOSFET. And we've got a diode from the positive supply, but the uh, USB positive supply also goes to the gate of the MOSFET. And let me show you the schematic of this. It is very clever, quite a useful bit of circuitry. So if you're running it off the AA cells and there's USB is not plugged in, 
the power from the cells goes via the MOSFET to the motor. Now notice this MOSFET is upside down. Normally source of a P-channel MOSFET would be going to the positive rail, but there's a reason for this. It's because uh, this MOSFET effectively has a uh, auxiliary diode as part of its construction. And it's in this instance, they have to reverse the MOSFET to uh, let it achieve what it has to do to stop, to block current flowing from the USB uh, via this diode and the virtual diode in there to the uh, AA cells and potentially try charging them in reverse and damage them or make them blow up. So normally this MOSFET, which is P-channel, has its gate pulled to the 0 volt rail by this 9.1k resistor and what that means is that it's always on. So with the 3 volt supply, the goes through the MOSFET that is on and then to the switch and then the motor and uh, that allows you to switch on and off via the switch to actually start the propeller rotating. If you plug in the USB supply, it then feeds the motor directly via this diode, but it also takes the gate of the MOSFET positive, and that effectively, because it's a P-channel MOSFET, it turns it off. And uh, that means that only the USB power supply is feeding this, and it kind of stops the, um, the uh, AA's being reverse charged. Now, if it had been put in the normal way, it would have been a diode, um, a parasitic diode, facing that direction. And you'd have the positive coming from here through this diode. It'd be feeding the motor, but it would also be going via that diode and to the batteries. But because they've used the MOSFET swapped, which you can do, the diode is actually in this direction. It doesn't really matter because even with AA cells in, the winning voltage is going to be 5 volts, it's going to reverse bias that diode and no current's going to flow to the motor. It is very clever. It's an A19T MOSFET, uh, also known as the AO3401. Uh, very neat circuit. Now, let's take a look at another aspect of this, because I took it apart further. The motor is not the little solary motor that I thought it was going to be. It's a fairly conventional little generic brushed motor. And... Uh, that is placed into the end of the cone and it's got a guide that holds it in position. Then there's a little dot of hot melt glue. You can see it there, hot schnot, as they say. And once that's in, a cap is put into the end. At this point, I have to say this would make an excellent base for a really tall ionizer with a little carbon fiber tuft out the end. That would be a very good case of that indeed. But once uh, it's in this cap here, which is two bits pressed together with the holographically pressed plastic, uh, it just pushes onto the shaft of the motor so it can spin around and deter those flies. So that's an interesting thing. It was well worth taking apart just to see this bit of circuitry here because that has other uses. But there we have it, the holographic fly repeller. Not bad. Not bad at all. Quite an interesting thing. And uh, some friends say they have seen these in use in like cake shops where they want to keep the flies off the cake. So it must have a deterrent effect. But I wonder what area, I wonder how widespread that deterrent effect is and what type of insects it deters. Maybe they do just interpret it as a very, very big predatory fly with uh, massive wings whizzing around. But quite interesting. Neat device.